Dang the more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Then open it, man. This is a crystal ball. A crystal ball? No, it can't be. Hey. Once you find out who killed Mukuro Ikusaba, then we'll know who the mastermind is. So where should I start my investigation and figure out who killed her? Let's just start with the rooms that were locked up until now. Headmaster room, the bio lab, the door to the dad's with Mon Monokuma's face on it. Oh yeah, that room too. Oh, and the second floor dorms where the gate was down before. The dad should be open now, right? After that, I have to double check areas that are connected to the murder. Between the garden and the dojo. Okay, time to get started. Oh nice, he got a whole list. Hey, I'm excited for the check out of the second floor. Go up there, man. Oh, cuss. The second floor of the dorms. Looks like some ancient ruins. No, it's like some battlefield, like a bomb blew up here or something. A giraffe head sticking out of a closet? Or a locker? Like what? What's that supposed to mean? This room is filled with lockers. It must have been the host peak students who came before us. The class before ours must have used these lockers. I can't imagine, imagine any way to get in this locker room. I'm not even going to bother trying. There are this one that's open. What if I can open this locker? Nope, locked. There's a card reader installed on the door. That must be how you get the locker open. After all, it's pretty similar to the card readers on the locker rooms in the second floor of the school. And you have to use your e-handbook to open those up. So does this mean? Well, let's give it a try. I took out my handbook and ran it across the card reader. And then... No luck. Maybe the locker's owner can open it, which means none of us can do it. Okay, well, there's nothing in here to check, so... I guess it's on rubble. There we go, another room that looks nice. This room doesn't feel like a student's room. It has more adult atmosphere. Correct. It's headmaster's private room. Yo, Kyoko, you're just showing up out of nowhere. I've been through this room several times already, but I still have one little regret. So I decided to check it out one more time. A regret? Looks like this is a secret door of some kind. A computer we can actually use? There's a PC on the desk. It must belong to the headmaster. See. Whoever used it last, it looks like they were very interested in the ultimate despair. The PC still has some research results left on it. Then we might be able to get some info on the ultimate despair. However, There's not much though. Nothing we don't already know. In other words, the ultimate despair isn't one that individual, but instead points to some kind of group. A group? That group is responsible for the tragedy which happened one year ago. They're the worst sorts of people whose driving force comes from despair. However, and that's all there is. Not much to it, is there? <sighs> but I guess that's the best we could do as a complete Kirigiri fa failure. Damn. But any information about the mastermind is helpful, right? I appreciate whatever info we can get our hands on. That's good outlook to have. Oh. Yeah, strange gap in the door. Is it some kind of design mistake or construction defect or something? So. There's a gap here, but not any normal gap. I can feel a breeze coming out. A breeze? It's luckily an open space to the other side of this wall. Open space, does that mean? Yup, a hidden room, a secret door. Secret tunnel. I think I might know how to open it. Oh! By all means, open it! No, open it? Did you figure out some kind of trick or something? Indeed. A very easy trick, yes. So easy, I'm not sure you can even call it a trick. I saw a program on that PC that I think controls it. Enter the right password and the door should open right up. Anyway, if we want to get in there, we need to figure out the password. And if Kyoko can't figure it out, there's no way I stand a chance. No wait, there might be a chance. The password could be something Kyoko wouldn't have thought of or something she didn't want to think of. For example, what about your name? What? Ooh! Oh sorry, I was trying to think of what the password might be. I'm sure she hasn't tried it. I mean, it's totally understandable. After the way she talked about her dad, the idea that he would use her name as his password. Knowing how she is, I bet the idea never even occurred to her. Um, do you mind if I try it, just to be sure? Well... It's not like you need my permission. <laughs> if you want to try it, try it. Do whatever you want. Okay. Let me just type the password here. I typed her full name, Kyoko Kirigiri. My hands were intense, slightly trembling, and as long... And as... And as I finished typing in it, it in... As you were saying, Kyoko, she said, I already know it's not it. <laughs> well then.
What? What? That did it? Kyoko, it worked. <laughs> How would she feel about that? Mixed feelings on that. Why? Yeah. K Kyoko? Yeah. Without looking at me, she disappeared into the hidden room. She looked grim. Kyoko? Let's go in there. I guess I know to know what Kyoko actually wanted to talk about. Oh, look, yo, baby Kyoko. A present. Wrapped and covered with such joy. That's what made it so unusual. A brightly colored box here seems totally out of place here. The more I look at it, the more suspicious I get. Then open it, man. Should I open it? I'm getting kind of a bad vibe from it. But I mean, I can't not open it. Okay. Makoto. Be careful, Makoto. Why do you think it's dangerous? No, not dangerous, but surprising, probably. Just don't scream or anything, okay? Oh, why is she making this, like, actually, like, a little scary? Are you saying it's something that'll make me want to scream? Okay, I'm just gonna open it. Step by step, step by heavy step, I approached the box. I took a deep breath, then took hold of the lid. Slowly, ever so slowly, I lifted it up. Light began to sneak its way into the box. I stole a hesitant gaze inside, and... <coughs> Hyoko's advice was no use. I let out a trembling cry. What? What was in the box? It was bones. Out of all the things, human bones. It was the last thing I expected to find in such a bright, joyful box. I mean, who could I possibly imagine? Whoa, Kyoko. Just as I thought. <laughs> what? I mean, there were bones in there. Human bones. Wrong. Well, it's not like I was thinking of the bones specifically. I just had a feeling it would be his body. Her father's? That's pretty much the same thing. A dead guy in a box? My father. Ew. What makes her think it was him, though? Huh? What about him? Correct. You found the box. Those bones, that body, that's my father. Or at least what's left of him. Are you serious? This is Kyoko's dad? The same man she's been, she's been searching for? Well, hold on, how can you be that? Sure, how do you know that's him? Sorry. Given all the information we have already, that's the only possible answer. This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high, high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Toast Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. Also, Eagle said that the headmaster was probably here in the school. But the only ones who were alive at the start of the killing game were us 16 students. When you put those two ideas together, it doesn't take much to assume. In other words, that most likely my father was in this school, but he was also dead. That's my assumption, anyway. As Kyoko explained her analysis, she was completely calm. Or no, she wasn't calm. She was only trying to seem calm. Yeah. I know Kyoko said she wanted to see her father so she could cut off all ties, but was that all there was to it? Hmm. I gave up on gave up on that pride. She at least wanted to like converse with him, you know. See what's got see what's up and whatnot, but Man, I gave up on that pride. In order to enter speak, I had to reveal myself to the school. I didn't know it was something that a true Kirigiri detective would never do. Would she really give up on, uh, give up her pride for that? I couldn't help but wonder. Headmaster's desk. It's probably hiding some clues, so I really want to check it out, but I only really want to touch Kiko's dad's desk without her permission. Hey. Don't worry about me. Feel free to look around as much as you like. Are you because... sure? Never let anything get in the way of the investigation. I don't. Okay then, if you don't mind. Starting from the top, I opened the desk drawers and looked inside. Rummaging through every, each one, finding nothing but unrelated documents. But in the last drawer... Ooh! We could use that for the lockers. This is... It's an e-handbook, right? And it's labeled on it. It says, in case of an emergency. I found something, some kind of emergency handbook in the headmaster's desk. In other words, a handbook with no limitations, given to, head, to, given to the school's ultimate authority, the headmaster. I'm assuming that's what that was. I think you're probably right. Mm -hmm. It would seem. It might prove useful if, as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? But Kyoko, I. I don't need it. If you don't want it, go ahead and leave it here. Then I guess I'll take it. Is it really okay? Take it, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> she said it's okay. I understand you 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 wondering about how she feels, but take the thing, man. Huh? This picture. Yep, little Kyoko and her dad, her pa, it's all faded. It must be pretty old. Wait, is this a picture of? Hey, Kyoko. Oh yeah, she didn't expect to see a picture. Man, she really got mixed in feelings with her father. Well, this is annoying. I came here to cut myself free from the past, and yet, despite him leaving her, he actually did care. I'm pretty sure him leaving was to try and protect her or something like, I don't know. Like, you know, some type of thing like that. He said, I have to leave you so that you don't get hurt or something like that. And it's probably related to this whole incident and hopes peak and everything. So now find something like this. So what do you expect me to do now? Then I was right. It's a picture of Kyoko when she was little. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all this time. He must really have cared about her. But what? yet he he, tr he didn't want her around. I wanted to face him and tell him myself to come out of my life for abandoning me. That's all the reason I came here. And now he's abandoned me again. And this time he even stole the only opportunity I had to move on. Has there ever been a worse father? Kyoko. Ouch. Hey. Listen, Makoto. Can I ask you for a favor? What's up? So. I know it's completely unreasonable to ask you this, and I know it'll be only be it'll only inconvenience you, inconvenience you that much more. But hey. could you leave? Correct. Just for a little while. I'd like to be alone for a bit. Kyoko. Don't worry. I'm fine. I just need to calm down a bit. Just I need to get my emotions in order. You know, Kyoko, you told me before about the relationship you had with your dad. How you're only connected by blood, not by heart and soul. But, maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe you hope to see me again someday. Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> you reading my mind? If so, it's just a theory. A game theory. And, it's ju and, it <laughs> and this isn't an issue that can be settled with theories. That picture doesn't change the fact of what happened, what I went through. I... That problem can't be solved so easily. You're right, I'm sorry. Anyway... Once I've got myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please, just give me some time to myself. Okay. Now, see you later. Fifteen of us met in the mail hall. Admir yeah, okay. Yeah. Six, of us, six of us are still alive. Everyone else is dead. Saika dead, Junko dead, Leon dead, Jira dead, Mondo dead, M those two dead, she's dead, she's dead, everyone, those, all those people are dead, 10 people dead, even Makuro dead, so the ones still left alive are me, Makoto Naegi, Togami, the ultimate war, no, he's the ultimate um, prodigy or something. Hero, the ultimate clairvoyance. Toko, the ultimate rider, something. Toko, the ultimate swimmer? Athlete? I think she's a swimmer. And Kyoko, the ultimate detective. Only those six people are still alive. Then there's no question. Wait, no, that can't be. I refuse to believe it. There has to be some other way. There just has to be. Let's start left to right. Come on, Makoto, come on. Alright, just what I was hoping for. Let's see what we got inside. Oh, a bunch of fortune telling stuff? This would be like hero stuff. This locker is totally disorganized. Wherever we belong to. Wait, there's six of us left. Mmm, whoever it belongs to, it probably has organization problems. Stuff in their life. Oh my gosh. This is a crystal ball. A crystal ball. No, it can't be. There's no way he ever uses locker. It's just not possible. That probably also relates to um, those photos because we know we don't know what's going on with those photos and everything. And maybe when we go to the bio lab, we'll see uh, some other stuff. Watch those like actual clones and stuff. Okay, picks up one of the notebooks and saw. What did you see? The moment I looked inside the notebook, any sense of easiness I may have evaporated. Yes, a hero. Ooh, what? There's no denying what I saw. The side of the notebook was written Yasuhiro Hagakure. This is our Yasuhiro. The notebook was contained with a large number of notes and a variety of different classes, which would mean he attended classes here. 
No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hero came into the school at the same time as the rest of us, and we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had the chance to take any classes. So what is this notebook? The tarot car cards? Yeah, deck of playing cards. No, the tarot cards. But wait, those, aren't those used for fortune telling? It's just a coincidence, right? One thing, it's practically empty. There's just one thing, some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure whose who's it is. But there's something, but there's some writing inside. It could be important. I don't like violent owner's privacy, but I better take a look. It looks like a girl's handwriting. And all the letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them was measuring them. I was looking through the pocketbook and my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there, words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here and for any communal life. I, detect I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father, Toko. No, not T Kyoko. What? He's willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our student prodigies safe, to keep them as our hope for, our, for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster and only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of our country, our world, is not an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the corrupted world and serve them as a foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. A hope, I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So that's what my father had to say for had to say for me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. So, in this other reality or whatever, in the past, Kyoko had this conversation with my father and she knew about this. This it can't be true, can it? But I knew who knew it was. And I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko. It couldn't be anyone else. But if it belonged to Kyoko. What was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hadn't seen her father since he left when she was little. False memories? Oh man. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plans directly. It just happens to be the headmaster and my father. What does this all mean? I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. But when I reached the last page, the question marks spinning through my mind just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, like the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganized scrawled. Despair walks among us and so we survive. There's a second despair. Yes, the second despair, the same thing Kyoko was theorizing. What does it mean? I have no idea. How could this possibly make any sense? So even past Kyoko had a similar mindset. Which is interesting. But these lockers, I mean, they had to belong to the previous students, right? So I'm seeing, so why am I seeing this? Why are there things in this locker that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seemed like it belonged to Hiro, and a pocketbook that seemed to belong to Kyoko? That has to be some kind of explanation. But if I want to find out, I have to keep moving the investigation forward. I have to believe in everyone. Okay, I need to check out the headmaster's room, the bio lab, and the Monokuma door. For the second floor dormitory area, okay. So yeah, I did search around the other parts of the school that were now unlocked, but my audio was not recording for any of it. Luckily, my video footage of it is up, so here's a quick rundown of everything that happened. I went to the data center first and saw Hina there. We went to the Monokuma door in the back, and there was a control room-like setup with a hatch on the bottom. This room is where the mastermind controls Monokuma in it. The hatch on the bottom went open, I wonder why, and Hina and I left. Suddenly, the room was locked and Monokuma told us that, yeah, the mastermind was literally right below you. Thinking about it, I wonder what would happen if Hina and I never left that room. Would the mastermind just keep themselves locked under there forever, starving to death? Not really important. After there, I headed to the headmaster room, and it was a mess. Togami was there, and we found the student registry of the students at Hope's Peak Academy. Even finding more information on Mokuro Ikusaba, and a photo of her too. Haha. <laughs> At the garden center, the body was moved, but in the tool shed, we found that one of the tarps that was covering the body was from the data center. 
Oh, did I say data center? I meant the bio lab. At the bio lab, things got creepy as the room was basically a freezer. Or shall I say, this was a morgue. And each of those lights were freezers with the bodies of those who had died. At the same time of discovering this, Monokuma calls everyone, showing each person a photo, the photo being of everyone. However, the only person not shown in the photo is Makoto. This causes distrust amongst everyone, or at least everyone who looked at the photos, which is myself, Togami, Toko, and Hiro. Not Kyoko, because she's smart enough to know that this was a trap to begin with. Back in the bio lab, Genocide Jill is there, then leaves. Kyoko comes in, and we do an investigation on Mukuro's body. After then, Kyoko gives me a DVD, so I head to the AV room, and this is by far one of the biggest twists in the game. On that tape is everyone talking with the headmaster. Each person, even Makoto, with everyone telling the headmaster that they wish to stay at Holt's Peak Academy. But Makoto doesn't remember this, nor any discussion with the headmaster about this. The video cuts off as Monokuma did it, since Makoto was probably getting close to seeing something. Then... To be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Although that dawn is totally pitch black, there is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again, because the end is only the beginning! Anyway, let's get started! The beginning of the end of the class trial! Everyone gather once again at you-know-where! 